welcome to a new video. Tonight I'm taking out the uh, Segway Max G2 scooter. Taking out for a ride. A somewhat chilly evening. I am starting out on Goss Avenue in Germantown. I initially planned to go somewhere else, but uh, traffic was not cooperating. So my intention was to go to um, cross the river to Jeffersonville, Indiana, and to ride around in downtown Jeffersonville, but there was some type of concert or some type of event going on down at the KFC Yum Center of the stadium. And there was, I think this may have been the weekend they do the light up Louisville thing where they get the uh, Christmas tree set up downtown. So instead I'm going a different way. I'll uh, see about looping through to Old Louisville. I'm using a uh, different camera than I usually use. It's the uh, Insta360 Ace Pro. This is one that just came out. I did not get this for free, I bought it. Um, it was one where they very heavily sold it on its low light capabilities. Get out of the street, kitty, please. So I figure I'd take it for a ride and see how it works. Because um, the, you know, it's an action camera. So for an action camera, it has a pretty big sensor at one over 1.3 inches. So almost a full inch sensor. Because um, I have some other stuff that does have a full one inch sensor that I've used for other videos like the it's the other Insta360 cameras, so they're 1RS 360 camera that's got a 1 inch sensor and the uh, 1R 1 inch sensor and both of those are nice, just the, the thing that I was kind of excited about for the action camera is that the 360 camera, which you know gives you a different result because it gives you 360 video, um, it's pretty heavy and the only really way that I can take it with me on rides and get usable footage is to mount it to the top of my helmet on the GoPro mount. And the helmet has a mount, but it doesn't feel super, super secure. Um, I mean, I don't think it's gonna fall off, but it's because that camera, the, the one inch camera is taller. You know, it's six inches or so tall. Um, so when I put it on the mount, it kind of sticks up in the front like a unicorn horn or something <laughs> and uh, draws a little bit of attention. Um, and it's just heavy and, you know, some of that stuff, you know, when you have stuff that's pretty light in the scheme of all things, you don't think it's a big deal, but it does kind of um, impact the way that the helmet feels having that extra weight on the front. And then the one inch, um, the, the one R one inch, it's just a little bit of a thicker, heavier camera. I'm not sure if it's all that much smaller than this one really, but um, it's just a little bit larger and heavier, especially um, when I use the uh, The extended battery for it that I have, it's pretty heavy. On a chest mount, no big deal, that's fine. Ugh, train. Yeah, because on a chest mount, that's not too big of a deal. But my, my excitement was 
with the more traditional action camera layout of this Ace Pro, I might actually be able to use the helmet mounts that I've got. And if I could use it on the helmet mounts that I've got, then that, you know, and it's not too heavy, it's not too distracting, um, then I could have an all around camera that I could use to go out for, you know, rides and stuff in the daytime, you know, into the evening when it's dark. So that, that was the thing that excited me. Um, so this is just kind of the first ride to go test out and see what the, the footage looks like in a low light environment. And I'm starting out, you know, I started out in Germantown. Now I'm kind of going through the U of L old Louisville area. Again, I had intended to go to Indiana and go around downtown Jeffersonville, but that was not in the cards. Well, I will turn, maybe I won't. <laughs> okay, I will turn right now. I'll turn left here in a minute. No, that's not a left turn lane, but cars are going very fast. So I figured I would test this out and see, see how the footage turns out. The other thing that's potentially exciting about this is that the onboard audio on the Insta360 1R and the 1RS is pretty poor. I think it's because it just uses a low bit rate for the audio, so it's not very high quality. Um, and that just kind of gives it that compressed sound that introduces a lot of random noise and sound into it. As opposed to this one seems to have pretty good audio which means that I could theoretically, um, depending on the setup and the scenario, I could use the built-in audio from this um, in some scenarios, or I can use the mic adapter that they provide and sell and connect uh, you know, extra microphones to this and actually use the audio off the camera instead of always having to sync it and editing. Not that that is a huge burden that takes not a lot of time, but, you know, anything that can save some time and make things a little bit easier is worth looking into. Um, so my goal here is to go to the St. James Court area. Because right now I'm not recording the audio. I'm not using the audio that's coming off. Oh! Not using the audio that's coming off of the um, camera. I have an uh, external microphone that I'm using. It's a DJI mic. Where I'm just recording the audio to the internal storage. And I'll sync it in editing. Because I ordered the mic adapter for this thing. I just don't have it in, it, don't have it in yet. This is pretty low light environment, um, you know, just street lights are the only light source. So now this is in um, St. James Court, which at nighttime may not be able to see much, but I figured it was worth going through to check out. So this is a... Uh, where a lot of the wealthy people used to live in this area back <laughs> over a hundred years ago. Um, and there are, well, they don't have lights on this yet. So I'll turn around here and see what all is visible. There's a fountain, which no, no longer has water in it because it gets uh, 
cold enough that it could freeze. And there's a lot of homes through here that are large, very large homes that I think in the modern era, some of them have been parsed out into different condos or apartments, but some of them are still single family homes. Um, kind of a historic area. So we're interested to see what the low light footage on this looks like because I've done some testing, you know, just walking around my house. I haven't done a whole lot of extensive testing. So right ahead, this is the, um, I forget what the name is, the, the Conrad Cal, uh, the Conrad Caldwell house. Because we had, um, my girlfriend and I, one of, one of our friends, went through back a few months ago in October every year. I think they said it's the third weekend. They have a tour where, um, I'll cross here once the cars are through. They have a tour that you can go through where you go through a number of the homes and they have actors portraying ghosts of the various, um, that, that align to the various ghost stories that exist about the place. Because there are ghost stories that have been reported through the area. Right now I'm in Central Park, which is right across the street from the St. James Court. Um, so this is a park that shares a namesake with Central Park in New York. And it also was designed by Frederick Olmsted. But I believe, uh, you know, that's where the similarities in. It's a very different style park, it's much smaller. Yeah, and the way that the, um, oh, the way that the low light is supposed to work for this is it has an AI chip that assists. Oh. Where basically it's supposed to, um, record the video because there's a there's a mode called pure video mode so what it does is it records at high isos and it tries to keep the shutter speed faster so that your stabilization works better and then it's denoising the footage in real time as it's being recorded before it's compressed and saved on to the memory card so theoretically it should help you be able to record video at high iso levels that looks um, better and more usable than it would be in a lot of scenarios. Uh, I don't want to go through the grass, it's still kind of wet. So I'll go through here. So that, that theory is that it, you know, can record video in dark environments and you can get usable footage in scenarios where previously you would not have been able to. Um, everything would have came out very noisy and grainy and very mushy. So now I'm on 4th Street. So I was just going through St. James Court, Central Park. I think they also have histo uh, historic home tours in December as well with the houses being decorated for the holidays. And I think there are a couple of uh, B&Bs in here, beds and breakfasts, or beds and breakfasts. <laughs> there are some bed and breakfast establishments um, that you can stay at. And in terms of a real-world use case of low light, this is, you know, 
a pretty good example because there's not a lot of ambient lighting here compared to a city like New York or Chicago or something. This is, you know, just intermittent street lamps, the ambient lights is on, the ambient lights that are turned on at the various houses. And then the lights off of the vehicles. And I guess I'll go this way. I'll go up a little bit further. There are actually bike lanes through here, which you can use. And I have, I have on this scooter, the Segway Max G2, these little rear view mirrors. They're just cheap ones I got on Amazon for like 10 bucks. I use them on one of my e-bikes to much greater effect, but on the scooter, since the handlebars are so narrow, it doesn't stick out very far. So this, you know, gives you some idea if there's a car behind you. I mostly have to tilt my body to get the the mirrors in a position where I can actually see what's going on. It's better than nothing. I didn't really want something that sticks out really far on the handlebars because I've seen some people put the full size mirrors on these. I think it just makes it harder to fold up and transport in a car and a trunk. And uh, it rained, not really today, yesterday, but it's still kind of wet out. So I'm being a little bit cautious as I go over these piles of leaves. Because if there are uh, a lot of leaves that are over a wet spot, going over that too quickly can easily introduce you to the pavement. Yeah, I think the, uh, I've done videos of multiple of these different, you know, scooters and, um, e-bikes and stuff. I think the G2 is a pretty good commuter. It, uh, you know, folds up to a decent size. It's not too big. It's not too heavy. You can fit in probably most cars. I can fit it in the back seat or the trunk. in a Toyota Corolla, and a Ford Focus, and a Ford Fiesta. So it's not, you know, it can fold up to fit in the trunks or hatch or rear seats of most vehicles. Um, the weight, I don't think it's too much. So, you know, 58, 60 pounds. For some that might be a little bit too heavy. So, you know, to me, somewhere between 50 and 60 pounds, I can easily get it in and out of my car, take it up and down the stairs into the basement, well, where I store it. Um, I think it's, you know, for me, it's easy to operate and to deal with. Now, if you're a little bit, um, you know, smaller, have any physical limitations, then it may be a little bit heavy and difficult to deal with at, you know, nearly 60 pounds. Thanks. Yeah, I'm wearing a uh, Lumos helmet. That's the Matrix that has uh, designs and lights on the back of it. To help visibility. I usually would wear my full face helmet, but uh, figured it wasn't super cold out and I didn't plan to go all that fast or in traffic. There's this bike lane right here, but it runs alongside all these cars and 
I just never trust that somebody's not just sitting there waiting to throw the door open. So I guess there's no cars behind me. Until there are, I'll stay out here on the street. Well, until I get clear of all the cars. So yeah, this will be a good test of how the... Uh, I guess I'll turn here. This will be a good test of how this uh, Ace Pro camera works, how the low light works. So the settings I have on this, I've got it on the pure video mode for low light footage. I have the low light stabilization setting turned on, and otherwise everything is set to auto. Because I figured I could test it all on auto first, because the other Insta360 cameras I use for low light footage, I manually set everything myself um, to get best results. But I figured with this, having some of these more intelligent AI features and stuff, I would test it out and see what it does. Usually I just have to set the ISO really high. <laughs> you know, going all the way up to like 3200 or something. And then I set the shutter speed to 1 over 100 or 1 over 120. Uh, depends on where I'm going. Because in the U.S., lights operate at 60 hertz is the refresh rate, how often they refresh. So once you start getting shutter speeds that are faster than that, that's where things pulse and look bad. And why, and I guess I can make this. When you watch GoPro footage shot during the daylight, when you go by a store that has a big LED sign out front, it's all just flickering instead of showing you what it actually says because the camera, you know, the shutter speed is faster. So the camera's refreshing more quickly than the sign and it's not able to see what it says. Um, so when I'm going somewhere that's going to have a lot of um, lights that are flickering, sometimes I'll set the shutter speed to 1 over 120, and that helps because it's a multiple of 60. Uh, and that's usually fast enough for the stabilization to still work well and to not be super jittery. Because usually the cameras, their stabilization uses the gyroscope data within the camera and some other stuff to determine what it needs to do to stabilize the footage. But if your footage has the shutter speed that's too low, you get motion blur. So then it's trying to reposition and move footage around to keep it stable. And because of that blur, things look jittery. So I'm just testing this on auto instead of setting everything manually. Um, to see what the results turn out like. If this turns out looking like trash, then I probably won't post it, but I um, figured this would be a good test, real world test. Because a lot of times when they send these cameras out to the early testers, you know, they're in New York, they're in, you know, an Asian country where everything is super bright and well lit. So a lot of the night test stuff doesn't accurately represent what the average user is going to be experiencing so this is taking it through an actual low light condition to see what this looks like uh, this is where having the suspension on this scooter is a back saver I love when cars are going, you know, obviously faster than I'm going, but not fast enough for me to do. <laughs> yeah, so I figured this is a good real world test. Like I said, it's all on auto with the low light stabilization feature turned on and the pure video mode for low light. I'm kind of in the uh, outskirts of the Highlands, Shelby Park, Germantown, going back to where I parked. I said I intended to go through downtown Jeffersonville, Indiana, but was not able to. Because there was way too much traffic and I was not going to waste another 15, 20 minutes trying to get across the bridge and then have to deal with the same or worse coming back, so.
I don't 100% remember exactly which way I need to go to get back to where I parked, but I'll figure it out. But yeah, so kind of a, a non, you know, nothing exciting happened. Nothing crazy happened, just going for a night ride, testing out this camera, because I, you know, do intend to use this for other, you know, um, projects. So I figured this is a good test. Actually, I might cut through this alley. This will be another good test to see what this low light footage looks like. But I haven't messed around with this too much. Um, there's a lot of review videos out there or, or discussions on the Ace Pro. The downside seem to be that had, you know it's a fixed non-removable um, lens cover. Um, which makes it more difficult to repair if, you know, you drop it and it cracks, which I'm sure plenty of people smash the things all the time. I personally have never smashed the lens of any of the cameras because I had the GoPro Hero 8 that I used for a few years that I didn't have problems with. I also had the fixed lens. I think the CEO of Insta360 said that if you smash it, they will replace it or repair it once for free. Um, but then the positive sides, it can record 8K footage, which I haven't tested yet, um, but that has to be in the regular video mode. You can record 8K, which most of your action cameras currently, like the, the GoPro tops out at 5.3K. So it's a little bit more resolution. Like I said, it has the AI features for the low light stuff. There's also AI features where in the app, you can load video shot in the normal video settings and it'll do AI animation on it, which looks kind of cool, but you know, not sure exactly what the, the use case is for that, aside from just short clips to throw on social media. Um, but then it records HDR, which I haven't messed with too much, but it looked okay in the day in the daylight, where it um, it's not recording it in a you know HLG color space, you know true HDR. It's just taking the video footage and I guess I'll go through the neighborhood. It's just taking the video footage and applying HDR processing to it, so the output file that you get should have more contrast between the highlights and the shadows. Again, I haven't tested that too much. It has a free frame mode where you can shoot um, and records the full sensor and then in the app, either for the phone or tablet or the computer app, you can resize the video to be 16 by 9, 4 by 3, or 9 by 16 um, vertical video for TikTok or Instagram Reels or something. Um, so pretty versatile, seems like something I could use as my main camera during a day, a ride during the day, and a ride at night, which is what I was kind of excited about, versus having to have a GoPro for the day ride, and then one of the other Insta360 cameras for uh, when it gets to be dark. This would theoretically be a camera I could use for both scenarios. And those cameras can record in the, in the sunlight too, it's just like, you know, the 360 camera, the weight and size of it makes it a little bit more complicated and the form factor and the one RS one inch. Um, I think it still looks pretty good, but I think I, I like the GoPro more in the daylight. So I'll see how this compares and, you know, once I've had a chance to test it more, but this is taking out a low night, uh, low light night ride. In uh, Louisville, Kentucky. Yeah, that'll wrap up this ride. Until next time.